What's up guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell and today we're gonna to go over some of my favorite bench accessory exercises. Hey guys, real quick, I'm trying to take this year to grow this channel as much as possible because the more of you I have watching, the more I can justify putting out more content on a more regular basis. So help me out, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'm aiming to put out three to four videos a week from now on. You don't wanna to have to play catch up, so go ahead and get them as they come out. You guys have been awesome. I appreciate everybody's support up to this point. I have a lot more projects coming out in the future, so thank you everybody for your support. Now many of you guys have already gone through uh, the typical experience of prioritizing lockout heavy work, you know, using the slingshot and board presses and doing a lot of the uh, typical powerlifting prescribed work that says the triceps have to be strong as possible and you get that through heavy overloaded top end work. Now while that is very good for getting your triceps strong, it's also very specific to the top end and it doesn't mean a whole lot if you're not good off your chest. It very much is a remnant of a quick lifting culture from 10, 15, 20 years ago where the shirts provided a huge bit of support at the bottom. So you really had to be able to manipulate the shirt and then lock out insane amounts of weight. There's 600 pound raw benchers who can't board press 700 pounds. There's 500 pound raw benchers that can board press 900 pounds. That top end strength is very specific and very specialized. And it's very common for people to take it way past the point where it offers any real world return to their raw bench press. So I maintain that the best way to reinforce your bench press is to make sure that you are stable and strong as possible right off your chest, because it doesn't matter how much your top end strength is developed if you are not able to get the bar moving off your chest. Getting strong and stable off your chest is also going to mean that your shoulders are going to be more insulated from the load and less likely to sustain an injury, which is hugely important. It takes time to get strong and you're not gonna get strong if your training keeps getting sidelined with injuries or small issues. So you wanna avoid those. And in my opinion, getting as strong and stable at the bottom position as possible is the way to do that. So the first exercise that I like that I don't see a lot of people do that has helped me out immensely in the past are pin presses. Now, any type of a press where you stop and deload the weight it can be manipulated to go through different ranges. If you go very high, again, we're talking about a lot of overload, a lot of tricep dominant work. I like to do my pin presses about one to two inches off my chest. I find that the uh, height is actually a little easier on my shoulders, which is nice. I don't know if any of you guys have issues doing full range bench presses and then having your shoulders get a little irritated after a while. I know mine are. So going a little bit higher than my chest, giving my shoulders a little bit of a break. But I also find it's enough of an increased mechanical advantage that the load can still potentially be quite a bit higher. And training it for a series of weeks, I typically find that the load jumps pretty quick. Now, because it is so close to where I actually take the bar in a four inch bench press, I find that there's a ton of carryover. So that's one of the reasons I really like it. Now there's two ways to do this. One way is to set the bar on the pins and go from a dead stop. Uh, that's, you could call that a bottom up bench press. I've heard it called a dead press or a dead bench press. I'm a huge fan of these. It's a pain in the ass to get under the bar, but it's worth it because once you get the bar kind of straightened out, you're gonna find how difficult it is to get that bar path just right, right at the start. It's a little bit more difficult. Now, there's a pro and con to that. There's a little bit of coordination involved and timing involved, but it's a good way to make a little less weight work for you because that is a bit more difficult. So I tend to bias variations where instead of just increasing the absolute load and getting sheer overload, little adjustments that make it a little bit more difficult. So the load isn't quite as important. You don't need the weight quite as much heavy because you're gonna find how difficult it is to control it from a dead stop. Then once you get that down, you're gonna find you're able to jump a lot quicker. Um, you're gonna find that you have to have your timing just right. Instead of one hard push, you're gonna notice that you're likely to skip the bar forward or back. You have to take the weight and then kind of steadily accelerate through. And I find that has a ton of carryover to being controlled off the bottom, especially when you're reversing direction. So I really like that. The easier way to do it is just to take it out of the rack and take it down to the pins. When you do that, you really want to make sure that you are uh, not bouncing off the pins and that you're not doing a short pause. It takes a few seconds for stretch reflex for that extra pop you get when you reverse direction, when you come down first, it takes a few seconds for that to dissipate. And one of the benefits, of a dead press is that you're able to train without stretch reflex so that when you do reincorporate it, you should be better off. But take a good three second pause, feel the weight 
deload completely onto the pins out of your hands and then maintaining tension through your shoulders, find yourself accelerating back in the weight. But you want a long, hard command. You want to make sure you're not bouncing off the pin. So this is what the pin press looks like. So in this position, I'm getting my shoulders tucked. You can also do this with a variety of grips. I tend to use it primarily with my competition grip. Every now and then I like it a little bit wider, but I've had some pec issues and uh, wide pin presses can cause some problems there. Uh, doing this with a close grip is actually a fantastic way to uh, work without the stretch reflex and target the tricep. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I really like close grip on this as well. So I'll take it out. My shoulders are back. I'm tight. I'm feeling the weight come into my lats, staying tight, tight, tight. I'm resting on the pins. One, two, three, accelerating back through. And that's what my pin presses look like. It's very controlled. Uh, I make sure to accelerate evenly the whole way instead of trying to jerk into it all at once because that's not what a heavy bench press should look like. If they do look like that, uh, I feel bad for your pec insertions. They're probably not gonna be attached to your body very much longer. So precision, timing, coordination, it's all very important. This is a great way to do it. And I find it does wonders for how strong and how stable I am right off the bottom. It checks a lot of boxes. So this is something I recommend uh, if you have two different bench days, this could be kind of the heavier movement in one of the bench days. Uh, you can actually do it as an accessory after your main bench work. It's gonna be hard to do if your main bench work is high volume, but if, you're, uh, if it's a lower rep range where it doesn't incur a ton of fatigue, this can be your second movement. Um, I don't recommend chasing the heaviest poundages you can do right off the bat. Give yourself time to improve. You'll be surprised how it only takes three or four weeks before this really starts paying off. So I would use about what your top bench press sets are and then add just a little bit each week for three or four weeks at a time before you change the rep range or swap it out for a different exercise. Now, normally one of the easy recommendations that gets made when you're talking about your starting strength on a lift is something that has to go through a little more range of motion. Deficit deadlifts get prescribed for a speed off the floor on your regular deadlifts. Um, taking squats to lower boxes can help with, uh, with squatting strength out of the hole once you go back to regular squatting depth. And I've even seen people do the same. They have cambered bars that are used for bench presses. I've seen people use fat grips so that your hands have to be lower by the time the bar touches your chest. I am not a fan of deficit work on bench presses. If you have healthy shoulders and you're not prone to shoulder problems, it is a viable option. Uh, dumbbells are a good way. You can get an extra stretch on dumbbells. Personally, my shoulders tend to get dodgy when I bench press too long without letting myself clear out. And I don't like piling on to that with other movements that are more likely to make my shoulders flare up. I find that deficits are one of those movements. So instead what I focus on is control and stability right around the position on my chest. Now, if you're used to coming down, tapping your chest and coming back up, you're utilizing stretch reflex. So just like with the pin presses, if we can eliminate that, then that is going to help immensely with your strength and stability right off your chest at the start of the lift. A pause bench press is a really good way to do that. I like to take it one step further and do a spotto press with a pause. Basically, Eric Spotto gets credit for it even though bodybuilders have been doing this for decades. Basically just stopping a very small amount right above your chest, only about an inch or so, and controlling the movement. What you're gonna find is that without the physical barrier of your sternum stopping the bar and without all the extra tension you get when your arms are all the way back, it becomes much, much more difficult to control the weight. So getting comfortable decelerating, holding the weight and then reversing direction over time, that's really going to increase your ability to handle heavy loads under control right on that area. You're going to find you're able to decelerate the weight and then reverse direction with the same loads much easier. So with the spotto bench, taking the weight out, I'm maintaining tension. I'm feeling my lats and shoulder blades stay tight. I'm coming down to about one inch above my chest. One, two, three, back up. I'm still focused on acceleration on the way up, but the control at the bottom is really the important part. And it's also important that I don't jerk the weight and that I don't jump the gun. I'm really fighting to hold it for a long time. It'll increase the difficulty relative to regular bench press marginally if you do a short hold, but you're gonna get the most out of it. 
if you actually go past the point where stretch reflex normally dissipates or at least lessens substantially, and you're talking about two to three seconds. So really deliberately uh, control those holds. Don't jump the hold. It's more about, with this exercise, demonstrating control, that isometric contraction at the bottom, than it is about how much weight or how many reps you're doing. So if I was gonna go in order of load, I would do something like a pin press first before doing something like this. If fatigue accrues, I like to uh, add other changes to kind of disadvantage myself further. So if it's more towards the end of your workout or if it's like the third or fourth exercise, you're gonna find you're not gonna be able to handle that much load so you don't prioritize load. So instead, I might take my hands out wider uh, so that I get a little more stress from the same weight. If I'm prescribing two bench sessions a week, I'm a big fan of having one day be kind of a subtle variation like this. So you could have one regular bench day, one day to start with the spotto bench. It all depends on what your normal bench schedule looks like. But in the beginning, if you're not used to this, this is gonna be kind of a rude awakening. You're gonna be surprised at how much you have to drop the percentages. But again, don't prioritize just throwing weight on each week. Let yourself fill out a certain rep threshold. Just add a set each week, hold it a little longer. Let yourself adapt to it. After about three or four weeks, you're gonna be very surprised at how much more comfortable it is and uh, how much more weight you are able to use. And that's gonna have an immense carryover to your regular bench press once you go back to it. One of the last variations that I like, a lot of you are gonna roll your eyes at, but I don't really care. This is a very underrated variation. And that is a feet up or a no feet bench press. So much of powerlifting culture over the last 15 years or so has really prioritized super tight, super compact bench sets, uh, setups to try and get absolutely as much compression and stability as you can at the bottom. That's great for when you're trying to you know, put up a world record or hit, hit an all-time PR. It's not so great for your training. Remember these variations we do, it's about disadvantaging yourself. It's about finding ways to make yourself work harder than when you're in the strongest possible setup you can get in. A close grip bench has your elbow going through more range of motion. It disadvantages the elbow joint. That's why your triceps grow, because you have to work harder to extend the elbow. A wide grip bench does the same thing with your pecs. That's why it targets your pecs. So we're trying to find ways to disadvantage you so that when you adapt to that setup, you are that much stronger when you go back to your strongest possible setup. So a no feet bench press takes away the stability you get from your really high arch, from getting your feet all the way back. If you are a big leg drive bench presser, you're gonna feel unstable, you're gonna feel like shit, but that's gonna mean these muscles up top, you know, the muscles that actually move the bar, they're gonna to have to work harder to get that bar stable and to get it moving. And again, once you go back to your setup, it's gonna feel so much better. So this is something guys have been doing in prison yards, guys have been doing at the gym, in corporate gyms forever. There's a guy, uh, Larson, if you've ever heard of a Larson press, they're named after him, I forget his first name but I believe he has some issues where he can't put his feet on the ground, so he benches with his legs straight out. So I've seen people prescribe Larson presses, which is basically benching with your feet straight out. It doesn't matter if they're straight out, it doesn't matter if they're bent and on the bench, it doesn't matter if they're up in the air. Just take them off the ground and understand how that little bit of a, a destabilization you're gonna experience, especially if you're used to a really tight setup, that's going to force you to control the weight more and you're going to adapt and you're gonna be better for it. So a no feet press can be done with your legs straight out. And already right here, I feel much less stable. It's harder to get my shoulders back and get tucked. Or I could do it with my knees up in the air. Or I could do it with my feet on the bench. One isn't really better than the other. They're all gonna create the same effect. Again, start light. This is really good for your finishing sets at the end. If you have some back off volume to do, especially in a higher rep threshold, that is a fantastic opportunity to get it in. Now remember, all of these variations can be also paired with grip changing. That's probably, that's the fourth. That's the fourth uh, secret bench accessory that's really underused. And that is frequently changing your grip. People will prescribe close grip or wide grip at different points during their training thresholds, but for kind of broad volume work that's kind of non-directional, that it's not really the heavy driving force of the progression, but it's still there, it still plays a factor, you can take your liberties. Even the West Side guys would change their grip on their speed work every set. Getting yourself more comfortable and building strength in different grips is gonna pad your upper body more. The more padded your upper body is, the more opportunity you have to really specialize in your strongest possible range. It's gonna eliminate weak points, it's gonna keep you well-rounded, that's gonna keep you effective, but also injury-free. So those are my favorite bench variations. Those are the ones that when I am 
not training for strongman and I am actually taking care of my basic pressing power tend to give the most carryover the soonest. And I find the more stable I am off my chest, better my shoulders feel, faster the bar goes off my chest, which makes lockout strength more of an afterthought. More of you are gonna benefit from increasing your strength and stability off your chest than are going to benefit from just doing arbitrary lockout work. So keep that in mind. So if you have any questions or you want further explanation, you can leave a question or comment in the comment box or go ahead and take it to the forum, empire-forum.com. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, this is Bromley Empire Barbell. I'll see you.